York Governor Andrew Cuomo gave a televised update earlier showing critical care nurse Sandra Lindsay receiving one of the first doses of the COVID-19 vaccine in the United States. She said she felt hopeful and relieved about the shot. We are in a new phase in the pandemic. The first shipments of, on Pfizer's vaccine, of Pfizer's vaccine rather, are arriving in states around the country. It was the first to receive emergency use authorization from the FDA. Moderna has also applied for an authorization of its vaccine. They're coming at a critical time. The U.S. has seen more than 16.3 million coronavirus cases and more than 300,000 deaths. Carl Zimmer joins me now. He's a columnist for The New York Times and also the author of the book, A Planet of Viruses. Welcome, Carl. So how does this particular vaccine work? The Pfizer vaccine is part of a new class of vaccines that are based on a molecule called mRNA. And basically, you, what you're doing is you're giving your body instructions to make its own vaccine. Uh, and so once you receive the vaccine, some of your cells will make uh, proteins from the virus. They're harmless. But the, what they do is they teach your immune system how to mount a defense so that if you get exposed to the real virus, you'll be able to knock it out immediately and not even know you've been infected. It's just remarkable to think about the development of this. So, Carl, what's the status of some of the other vaccines currently in development? Well, uh, Moderna, as you mentioned, is uh, hot on the heels of Pfizer. They're going to be uh, reviewed this week. And so it's potentially possible that uh, people will be getting Moderna shots next week. It'll be that fast. Um, there are a number of other vaccines in advanced trials around the world. Um, for the United States, one of the most important will be Johnson & Johnson's vaccine. That will be one that uh, could potentially be given as a single shot as opposed to two shots for Pfizer and Moderna. Uh, we'll know if that works in January. Well, what are some of the biggest hurdles that you anticipate seeing as this vaccine starts being rolled out? Well, um, certainly the Pfizer vaccine is, is uh, not an easy vaccine to play with, um, just in the sense that it has to be kept really cold, uh, minus 94 degrees. Uh, Pfizer has gone a long way in building boxes with dry ice that can uh, keep them cold. But, uh, you know, this will be um, definitely adding to the challenge. And just the logistics. I mean, you know, there are lots of vaccines on their way to the East Coast. We're about to be slammed by a winter storm. You know, let's let's hope we can get through that and get them uh, to where they need to go in a timely fashion. Um, so, you know, it's just basically we're looking at a kind of a vaccination campaign on a scale that really the country has never done before. So it's going to take a lot of things to go right. So far, so good, though. People are getting vaccinated today. Um, and so things look good so far. So far, well, roughly 300,000 people in the U.S. have died from the coronavirus, and a model from the University of Washington projects more than half a million Americans could die by April 2021. How soon might we be able to see an impact from vaccinations? Uh, vaccinations are not going to help us with this current crisis, I'm sorry to say. Um, we're, we're only going to be having, you know, a few million people initially being vaccinated. It's going to take weeks for them to reach their peak immunity. Um, so right now, when we're dealing with a pandemic at a level that we've never seen before, uh, we can't rely on vaccines. We, we have to rely on things that we've been hearing uh, from public health officials, wearing masks, keeping distance, not being in, in uh, indoor spaces with a lot of other people. Uh, those sorts of things are really, they're really all we've got at this point, unfortunately. Um, so if people can hang in there and take these warnings seriously, um, they'll be able to get to the point where they can get vaccinated. Um, you know, any, any, anyone who gets sick from this point forward, I just think we have to look at it as a, as a tragedy because there are, there are incredibly inf effective vaccines uh, that are becoming available. Hmm. Well, um, Carl, one of your colleagues at the Times recently wrote about misinformation concerning the Pfizer vaccine. How can that be combated, especially now that people are actually starting to get vaccinated? 
Well, you know, I, people have questions and they ought to have questions, um, you know, and uh, they should look for reliable answers. So at the New York Times, we've actually been putting together a long list of answers to frequently asked questions. The Center for Disease Control has been putting out, you know, a, a sort of a government approved list of of uh, questions and answers. Um, so people should be looking into this. But also just remember that there are um, there are, are, are organizations, um, some of which are in other countries, who have it in their interests to spread misinformation about vaccines. And they've been doing it for years. So when you see something that sounds really scary and terrible, um, ask yourself, what is the source? What is their evidence? And is anybody else saying that? Uh, you know, if someone shares something with you on Facebook that they copied and said, this is from a friend who's a doctor, well, is that real? Um, ask yourself that because, uh, you know, we've just gone through an incredible process of demonstrating that vaccines for coronavirus are safe and very effective. Uh, and so you should, so people should get to know that evidence and, and understand how that worked. Um, and I think they will feel confident that this is a vaccine that they and their loved ones should get. I know I'm getting it. 